We have recently been on our very first cruise and since posting our content to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok, we've got so many questions about our trip. In this video, we are going to give our full review of our cruise with Princess Cruises and answer some of the questions that you sent in. Now for context, we spent four days on the Regal Princess. We boarded at Southampton, we headed towards Cork and Ireland and then we headed towards Dublin. And at that point, we got off the ship. However, the ship does continue its route with stops including Liverpool, Edinburgh and Le Havre in France. For more information about the trip that we did, we will leave a link in the description of this video. Now, if you want to see a full tour on the Regal Princess, we did a full video and we will link it in the description below, but we basically show you all the incredible things that you can do on the ship. We'd highly recommend for you to watch that video after this one. So now that we're all caught up, let's get into the questions. Question one, what package did you guys use on the ship? So the package that we had was the Princess Premier. Now it's the best package that Princess offers. So I'll just pop here on the screen everything included in the package and here's some of the things that we loved about it from the list that you can see. So we'll start with the Premier drinks package. So we could get up to 15 drinks per person per day up to the value of $20 per drink. For us it was basically like having unlimited drinks because we'd never use up to the 15 drinks in a day. Although we did make a good go at it, didn't we? <laughs> There's so many drink options on board. So just having this package was perfect. Yes, it's definitely a feel good factor to have unlimited drinks when you're on a cruise. As Samantha said, there was so many options. You could get beers, you could get ciders, you could get cocktails. The list was endless. So yeah, it's just a really, really nice touch to have that when you're on the cruise. Another feature we loved was the room service. Now we only really used it in the morning time for our morning coffee, but being able to just click on the Princess app and order our coffee before we got out of bed and that was like delivered straight to our room, mm. just was a great way to start our day yeah. and it's just another feature that we loved. Yeah, we actually used it as like a, an alarm clock slash <laughs> coffee fix. So that was great to just have that convenience to just off your phone, send a, a message to say that you want the coffee and it was there. Yeah. You could also use it for food and drinks as well, but we only used it for the coffee. I think so, yeah, the coffee, that yeah, was it. Yeah. But the option is there to use it for whatever you want, really. Also, another great feature that we loved was the unlimited juice bar. So there is actually a gym on board the ship as well. We used it a few times and then afterwards we would go up to the juice bar and just get the likes of like your orange juices or apple juices and things like that. And then they would mix certain smoothies and stuff like that. So if you're there for like a health buzz kind of thing, this stuff is really, really good or just a good cure for the hangover. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, as you could see by the list, there's so much included in the package mm. that we had. Another thing we really liked was the speciality teas and coffees and desserts. Mm. We had unlimited mm -hmm. and I do love a nice iced caramel latte. So being able to get them whenever I wanted was just a great bonus. Yeah, if we were definitely doing another cruise of Princess Cruises, we'd go for that package again. It just mm. really did tick all the boxes for us. So yeah, it depends on you as an individual. I don't know if you like to have your drinks and stuff like that, if the package would suit you, but there is loads of different packages you can look up online anyway and see what's available. Okay, next question. Can you give us a little bit more information about boarding the ship? Okay, yeah, so boarding the ship was actually quite quite easy, very hassle-free. Once you arrive at the port, in our case it was the Southampton port, um, you just basically go up and check in and they'll give you like a bag tag. So you've got to obviously get rid of your luggage first and then later on when you get to your room on the ship, your bag will magically appear outside the door, which is pretty cool. So once you're all checked in, you'll receive this thing here. It's called a medallion. And this is basically your key card and your wallet to everything on the ship. And then you'll be given a group number. So you just take a seat and then you wait for your group to be called. So we've just collected our medallions and we've checked in. So they gave us a number, group number 14. So we're just waiting to be called so we can go and check out our room. And then once your group is called, then you'll just go through security and then you'll board the ship. It's actually quite easy. Yeah, I think the way that they do it with the groups is basically just to stop long queues and mm. kind of people rushing on. So once you're given your group number, you just sit and wait. And then when they call your group, then everyone in that group can just board the ship. So it is quite, it's quite hassle free. Yeah, like. it makes sense. Like, <laughs> So yeah, as we mentioned, the medallion, you actually get to keep it as well. <laughs> it's a little souvenir, <laughs> but um, everything is linked to this. So before you board the ship, you'll actually check in on the Princess app. You download it onto your phone and fill in all your details. Uh, you take a picture of yourself and everything on it and, you know, add your name and stuff in. And um, it detects everything, basically. Like if you go to get a drink at the bar, yeah, the barman knows your name because he just this sort of this thing just detects you. <laughs> it's, it's actually great. It's it a is. great feature and it's unique to Princess Cruises as mm. well. We really loved this now. Uh, same with like entering into your room. As you're approaching your room, it detects you. Like, even if this is not around your neck and it's in your bag and the door will just open, your picture comes up and your name comes up. So, yeah, it's just a really cool 
It's handy and convenient, yeah. isn't it? It's just very handy and convenient. Once you've got this, you're basically covered for everything on the ship. Yeah, you need nothing else. <laughs> Next question. How many people were on the ship and did you find it overcrowded? Definitely didn't think it was overcrowded. Now, there was three and a half thousand people on the ship. Um, I think that was its full capacity. But in mm-hmm. terms of feeling overcrowded, definitely didn't feel that. Uh, the ship is quite large, so although there is three and a half thousand people on it, there is plenty of space. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't really feel like you're bumping into people or queuing or anything like that. We never that, have you know? to queue for a drink or no, anything at no. the bar we didn't find or no, you know, anything was, like that. Yeah, it was quite spaced out. The only thing we would say, I suppose, about that is like on the ship there is like a princess theatre and things like that and that would have you know X amount of people that can mm-hmm. be in there so in that case if you wanted to get a seat you might get there early earlier so you might have to just be aware of that but also with the premiere package as well you do get reserved seating as well for shows and things like that so that would be another bonus to, to mm-hmm. get in the premiere package but it just in general I think uh, that would be and maybe the the dining as well. Would that the be? dining, you might have to make a reservation if you want one of the speciality mm. dining restaurants yeah. and things like that. Yeah, that was probably but the only things I could think of. Yeah, other than that, it definitely didn't feel overcrowded. Again, the ship is so large, it's massive, <laughs> so did not feel like there was 3,500 people definitely on it. Not. Okay, next up, how was the food? I'm going on a cruise with Princess Cruises in August. Okay, so uh, enjoy your cruise in August. I think you will. It's, uh, it's going to be great. How oh, was the yes. food? Food was A1. It was fab, honestly. We thought it was amazing. There were so many options as well on board. So there's like a standard buffet for everybody. And that alone had literally everything, everything, (laughs) didn't it? Like every type of food that you can think of. You know, they covered breakfast, lunches and Mm. dinners and just everything. And the food was delicious as well. They had like special dietary options. You know, if you were like gluten free things mm, yeah, they had, vegetarian yeah, vegan yeah they had lots of different options for people and things like that so a lot of sweets a lot of savoury foods as well so it was just kind of a mix of everything really so you couldn't really go wrong you'd be spoiled for choice yeah but then uh, just talking about food as well there is some speciality restaurants so mm. two that we ate in they were also included in our package mm. Um, was the Crown Grill Steakhouse and Seafood and it was absolutely gorgeous I have to say probably the nicest steakhouse I've ever eaten in <laughs> the food was just unreal um, and you can really feel that it's like a special dining experience yeah, as well yeah. it was lovely so we'd highly recommend that I think mm-hmm. it's even if that's not included in your package you can just book that as an extra um, and then the other one was Sabatini's Italian restaurant that was really nice as well yeah, yeah that was amazing they did some incredible pizza as well so um, but yeah, they're the two that we'd recommend. There was some others as well, but yeah, in terms of food, I think you'll be okay on the ship. There's so many options, as we said, and the quality of the food was excellent. Mm-hmm. Okay, next question. Can you feel the ship moving? I get motion sickness, so it's putting me off booking one. Hmm, hmm that's... I'm I mean, that's no. fair enough because, you know, to ask that because you mm. never really know, like, but for our, from our experience, the ship is just so big that it's crazy. You don't actually feel like you're on a ship at all. No. Don't you know? It's No. I, I, it kind of did surprise me a little bit with how smooth it was. Like, yeah. even when you're on the the, the the balcony looking out at the water, you just kind of feel like you're gliding along. So, it definitely doesn't feel like you're on a ship. No. There was, like, once or time. twice, I think, Yeah. maybe when we were sitting having food, you might feel a little... It's just like, like a... Yeah. Just a slight move, movement. Yeah, but, like, yeah. it's nothing really too bad and that just depends on the sea conditions as well but um, I I suppose I'd recommend if you obviously suffered with seasickness to take some tablets before you go on Yeah, because you do hear stories of some people that just don't take to them at all yeah I think it does depend kind of on the severity of of just how sick you feel I mean Mm. we're kind of quite lucky where we've been on even smaller boats as well and we don't really get that you know but we have seen people who have had to lay out flat on a boat because they're just struggling so much so I I suppose it does depend on how bad you get it Uh, as you said you can get tablets you can get tablets yeah and the little wrist things yeah so I'd probably just recommend if you were worried about that yeah be no harm to just bring them with you or take them before you go I suppose but again from our experience we didn't feel it at all no I think the, the biggest time that we probably felt it for me was in, in the gym we were on the treadmill yeah. and we'd be running and you could kind of so you're obviously moving yourself and you can just kind of feel a small thing but very minor in our opinion to us it was very very minor I think that's only as well because the treadmills are right looking out the window <laughs> so you can see that you're like in the sea you know you're looking the sea is moving that way you're running this way so yeah it's bizarre but yeah but well, other than that yeah no we found it completely fine 
So next question, what time can you board? What time can you board? I think we got there at about 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we were able to just get in the queue straight away to board. I think the, the official boarding time might be like 11 a.m. or something like that. Uh, we, we actually flew from Portugal to Southampton in the UK um, and we had arrived, I think it was about 9 a.m., half 9, and then yeah. we just went straight to the port and I think by, by half 10, 11, we were probably on the ship at that point. So And we were group number about, 14 as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, so. So, so we weren't exactly at the top of the queue. But yeah, I think roughly it's in and around 10, 11 a.m. maybe. Yeah. Okay, next question. Did you do any excursions? So yes, we Mm. did one excursion and that was when we reached Cork in Ireland. So it was called the Best of Cork and Countryside. That was just the one that we fancied. Um, But it was actually a really nice tour. Um, It went on all day. I think it was like from nine in the morning and we got back to the ship at 5.30 in the evening. Mm. But there was a few nice sites. I mean, iconic sites around Cork that we got to see. There was Blarney Castle. We also stopped for a lovely lunch in a place called Roaches Town Park Hotel. So our next stop on our excursion is some lunch. So we're actually quite hungry now, which is great. This is included as well. That was really nice, nice Irish experience then as well. Some traditional Irish music. Very good, very good. We also had a little stop then at Charles Fort. The weather wasn't really great, so that was like just a quick sort of stop. And then we ended our tour at the town of Kinsale, which is a lovely little coastal, sort of picturesque, colourful, vibrant Mm. town. It was really lovely. So yeah, just on the excursions as well, it is recommended that you book them before you actually Mm. board the ship, so maybe a week or two in advance. Um, If you can't do that, or for some reason it just doesn't happen, Mm -hmm. you can actually book them. There is an excursion desk on the ship. So you can go and you can see what uh, availability they have and also a list of the excursions uh, and you can just pick which one that you fancy and then you can just go and do that. Yeah, there's so many options for all the different places but um, we Mm. went, went, as soon as we boarded we actually booked our excursion and we're happy that we did because I think that one sold out quick enough. It was like one of the popular ones. Mm. So yeah, it's good to just sort of, you know, have that booked if, if there's one that you fancy doing. Next question, what type of room did you stay in and was it comfortable? Yes, it was comfortable. Very comfortable. We stayed in a stateroom with a balcony. Mm. And I think, well, I loved having the balcony. It was great, wasn't yeah, it? it was I mean, lovely. you're on a cruise ship, you, you want to have that balcony. It was nice just yeah. to chill out on, especially on sailing days. Yeah. But the room itself was very cosy, very roomy as well, actually. Mm. The bed was very comfortable. Pillows were nice. Um, nice bathroom with a shower. Yeah. Uh, what else Plenty do we have? Plenty of storage space as well. I mean, the bed is massive, which you'd think then would eliminate space yeah. elsewhere but yeah no there was a, a little kind of alcove around the other side where you could put your suitcases and hang clothes and then also there was some drawers that mm-hmm. you could pull out beside the bed which was great there's a fridge there was a mini fridge yeah. we had a smart tv mm. so yeah i have to say i couldn't say anything bad about the room we were really happy with the room that we picked now you yeah. can get bigger ones again if you look up online you'll see the different options but yeah our one was just a state room with a balcony and we slept like babies. babies. <laughs> <laughs> this bed, seriously. <laughs> you actually did. <laughs> yeah, no. It was okay, it was next one. Uh, next question. What were your expectations before boarding the ship? So we know a lot of people that have went on cruises and they speak so highly about them and they've always said to us like, you know, you need to do a cruise, especially that we travel a lot. So we did have high expectations before we boarded the ship. Yeah. But I don't think you ever really know what it's going to be like, even though you have high expectations, until you're on that ship. Because yeah. we were blown away by it, weren't we? It, yeah. it's I think I was surprised by the amount of detail to yeah. and the amount of activities that you could do. Like there was everywhere you looked, every every deck that you went on just had something that was impressive like you know and just stuff you wouldn't think of like I thought the running track at the top was pretty funny and then there's like a little golf area and then there's basketball courts and tennis courts and stuff like that so um, yeah and then all the swimming pools and jacuzzis with the big TV there was just loads of kind of things where I was like wow this is this is amazing. We I were didn't walking think around and we like were that. like, wow, yeah. for the first day, I think yeah. it just took us a while to sort of take it all in. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So, it actually felt, if I'm being totally honest, it did feel a little bit overwhelming at the yeah. very beginning because it was like, wow, there is like so, so much, much to do here. Uh, where I was thinking, you know, would there be that amount of things to do? And there was, there was yeah, loads. It was great. A lot. So it lived up to our expectations. Yes. yes. Next one, the ship looked massive. Uh, surely you got lost. 
<laughs> the first day we did. The first day we did, yeah. I'm not going to lie. And I think everyone probably did. <laughs> we couldn't have been the only ones. We've seen a few people like walking up this way, that way. But uh, you do get used to it pretty you get, quick. You get used to it pretty quick. There's also a uh, like an interactive de- uh, device on each deck which you can figure out how to use a map it'll show you where you are and then where you want to go and things like that so it's very very straightforward I think initially you're just running around a little bit yeah. like a headless chicken going right which way is it this way that way and then you kind of get a bit smarter with yeah, it like you get the out. grips of it but again yeah. that's where the medallion comes in really handy so the screens that are actually around the ship as soon as you approach them it scans this and like your name comes up and it will show you sort of everything where you yeah. are and then you can put in where you want to go so mm. and they're everywhere on the ship another feature that we thought was really good is um, if you're with a party of let's say five people um, everyone can link their medallions together mm. so you know maybe if you've no signal when you're sailing or whatever and yeah. you want to find someone um, it can locate exactly other people right, as yeah, well yeah. where they are so we thought that was sort of really cool. Yeah, we like, thought that was handy. Yeah, just something that you probably don't think you need until you've lost people, you know, that kind of way. So, yeah, it was very convenient, very handy. Uh, but, yeah, I think to answer your question, I think initially you can get lost. But then pretty soon after you figure out how it all works and then you're fine. Next question. What was the age group on the ship? I have to say there was like a mixed age group. Yeah. Wasn't there? There was like yeah. kids and everything on board, which yeah. we were sort of surprised about. But yeah. again, it was our first cruise, so I don't know. You just hear of a lot of people, like couples going away on these yeah, cruise yeah. ships to sort of spoil themselves without the kids or whatever. Yeah. But there was kids on board, but um, sort of the majority, I'd say, of the age was between 50 and 60. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Majority Did you say of the people that as well? were probably 50, 60 plus. But yeah, there was, as you said, it was, but it was mixed. a mix of all ages, really, just predominantly 50, 60 plus, yeah. I would guess. Yeah, that's our guess. <laughs> Next question. Did you get bored? So we kind of touched on this a minute ago with our expectations of just how many great things there was to actually do on the ship. I think it'd be hard to get bored on the ship mm. unless you're a very boring person. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much on the ship, isn't yeah, there? Like, there is. There is so much. We actually have a list of them here just in case we forget some of them. But um, talking about the drinks package. So having your drinks package, how could you get bored? Mm. You know what I mean? On the upper deck then as well. It's an open deck. There's like swimming pools, jacuzzis. There's a big screen. It shows movies, live concerts. If you're into the football, it shows the football yeah. games. The Formula One as well was the on Formula when we were there. So. yeah. There's, it's surrounded by bars and like little pizzerias and yeah. things like that. So that was really, really that cool. Was great. There's also a cinema as well, which is just insane. There's a karaoke area as well, so you can go for your karaoke nights. There's also like a, a princess theater as well where they do shows. I think the times that we went, there was like a hypnotist show and then also like a like a dance, Born to Dance, I think was the name. It was, it was like, like a Broadway like thing. Broadway, yeah. The dancing yeah. and singing there was unreal. So very, I really very... loved that now, I have to say. And then the hypnotist show, that was our first one to go to. Yeah, yeah. And we don't know how we felt about it, but it was very funny to watch. Wasn't it was very, very <laughs> funny to watch. The jury is out whether or not we believed it. <laughs> the but, but yeah, again, great entertainment. Um, also as well, there's a casino on board as well. Um, and then they have an incredible spa it's called the Enclave and we popped in there for a few hours during our time on the ship and it was just unbelievable not gonna lie it was probably one of the best spas that we ever went to they just had all these different type of room chambers and stuff that you could go into and it was like different aromatherapies and things like that we were spoiled now I have to say the day we went in was a shore excursion day so we had it all to ourselves yeah, it was so yeah. that's a little tip from us if you weren't getting off the boat to do a shore excursion probably the best time to go and go treat to yourself spa. in the spa <laughs> uh, they've also got shopping as well so um but i do think that you can only shop when it's docked or when it's at when sea? it's sailing oh when it's sailing yeah, yeah okay yeah so the shops will not open when you're docked so if you're doing any shopping make sure you do it on a sailing day there's also a gym like we mentioned before which was uh which was great a running track a running track which i, I couldn't get over um but yeah there was just endless amount of things to do wasn't yeah there? you could never get bored and the thing with the shopping it's the shops are opened which makes sense on sailing days mm. So I'm guessing when someone's asking, would you ever get bored? You're talking about on sailing days because when the ship is docked, you're probably going to want to get off and do some excursions. Or if you don't want to do an excursion, you don't have to. You can actually just get off the boat. I think a lot of people do that as well and just walk around and see the place yourself. Just depends on you. So, yeah, no, you'd never get bored. bored, no. No. Next question. Will you go on princess cruises for Japan and South Korea? Oh, I mean, yes, I definitely would. <laughs> we actually travelled to Japan and South Korea and we loved both countries, yeah. so I'm sure a cruise 
in them countries would be amazing. Be amazing, yeah. There's actually so many destinations and cruises that you can go on with Princess Cruises. If you check out the website, um, we'll link it in the video, you yeah. can go and just click the little destination thing and it'll show you which ones they do. They do one to Alaska, which looks incredible. There's also another one around the Caribbean and then oh, my yeah. personal favourite was the South America and Antarctica. That would be my dream. You know, that would to be go a dream, that one. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that may be our next one <laughs> may happen in the future but yeah as we said endless amount of destinations and opportunities but yeah when is your next cruise it looks absolutely fab but not your typical type of travel well you are right it Definitely isn't not. Our, uh, <laughs> our typical type of travel this was our first ever cruise so we have never done it before we're so happy that we did it probably a new way of travel for mm. us i have to say yeah, the one definitely. thing that we loved about the cruise travel was it was just so relaxing I mean, and everything was done for you. Yeah. You know that way, like so. I suppose if you were the type of person that maybe you weren't good at booking your own sort of travel yeah, or whatever, yeah. like a cruise, and and there's destinations that you see maybe that princess cruises go to. Mm. It'd be a good way to see these sort of countries or whatever. You know that way you're you're spoiled on the ship. Yeah, yeah. You know that way you really are, and then you can book your sort of offshore excursions. Then. Yeah, yeah. It's all organised. It's just such a strange concept for me and Samantha because we. We have to organise every single trip that we go on, basically, you know, yeah. so for this to just rock up and just let other people look after it was such a nice experience, wasn't it? It was a nice experience, a different Probably. experience of travel, mm. definitely, and yeah, we loved it, and Our again, definitely a new, a new way of travel, we'll definitely do more cruises in the future, for sure. Yeah, we're not sure when our next one will be, but there will be another there one. There will be another one, yeah, a bigger one. Antarctica! <laughs> right, so that wraps it all up, that's all the questions, mm. um, we hope we sort of answered everything that was everything that was asked yeah i know when we turn the camera off we'll be like oh we forgot to mention yeah. that but yeah if you do have any additional questions or comments leave them in the comment section below this video yeah and we'll answer them then through the comments yeah. also as well make sure to watch our previous video which is where we give a full tour of the ship so if you watch that and then watch this this video will have a little bit more context because you'll know exactly what we're talking about but the ship you need to see the full tour oh yeah we also just want to say a big thank you to Princess Cruises for inviting us onto the ship. As you said, it was our first cruise and now we are hooked. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that we will be sailing with Princess Cruises again in the future. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful and you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up because it does support our channel. Mm. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all of our future uploads. Yeah, you can follow us on our social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and TikTok uh, at Go Time Travels. Again, we link them in the description also. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for sending in your questions. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.